Hello. I want to follow up with an article we have about use the, the important use of NCC, NOAA Custom Charts, that we make online. And we have an example exercise, and I want to just work, I just want to work that example now. And to find the, um, to find the, to find the right place, you can just type NOAA NCC app in here. And that will get us to here, and then we probably have to link over here is here. Now, there we are at the app. And the one we want to make, I'm zooming, I'm rolling in with my um, cursor roller ball on the mouse. And we're making a rather special one um, that can be used for students in a classroom to plot on uh, when they print it just on 8.5 by 11 paper. So we're just going to make a little chart of this area. And uh, this area has data accurate to 40, um, 1 to 40,000, which is plenty good enough. If we zoom in, you see this is what the chart looks like. And we also discuss in the article, which I'm going to link to, that on this app, you can also treat it like a real ENC viewer. And you can click this button I up here, and then click that I, and then you can click here. And you see, you learn that's a latitude uh, buoy, a lateral buoy, and it's a compilation scale. This area one to forty thousand, and also at this particular point, there is a bunch of other information. That's a day mark on that buoy. Um, there's a depth contour you see here. Uh, well, you can't hide it, but there's a depth contour of. Uh, oh, that's zero. That's the. Uh, that's the edge of this green. That's a that's a zero tide height, uh, and so forth. So you can see, or you can just go up here and click someplace else. Um, click this guy. Well, now I lost my contact, so I have to go back and turn him on. Then I can look at this light here. Um, okay, turn it on, and then it'll be a pointer when it's on. Then I can click it, and then you see that's a light. And at that same location, I've got a beacon, a day mark. I got a depth contour. Now you see this depth contour is highlighted. That's a 1.8 meters, you know, and so forth. So to the extent that it's useful, before you make your actual chart, you can sniff around like that. This is the way this chart would look if you were looking at it in an actual ENC. In other words, we download the electronic navigational chart of this area, the ENC, and we load it into a, a navigation program of our choice, uh, QTVLM, OpenCPN, uh, Expedition, whatever. And this is what you would see. And you can zoom in on it like that and see your boat moving around and so forth. But that's not the exercise at hand. <clears throat> the exercise at hand now is to make a, a paper chart so that we can do traditional paper chart plotting with these new NCCs. Okay, so here are instructions and videos on how to do this. I'm going to skip over those and hope I can get it okay. Here, I just, we actually are not going to need this, but I would turn the data extents on. That's the labels and then the scale and the chart number and the scale. And now, uh, right, no matter what you're doing, you would always end up having to turn on all. For be sure this all is always on. In this case, we can, we can zoom in here and see what charts. I think there's coastal charts, no, approach charts. Yeah, see, there's the approach chart of this area. Um, actually, there's better than that. Let's see, coastal. Well, there is a 1 to 40,000 chart of this area. I'm not going to dwell on that now. Just click. Be sure that when you make any of these, e when any of these NCCs, be sure you choose all. Okay, so we're going to have all data sets. That means, that means your production of a paper chart is going to use all layers of ENC data that exists at this location. Otherwise, you can limit it to just, you know, just a large scale, just a small scale. All right, now let's go to the next button up here. Let's give it a name, S-E-Q-U-I-M, Squim Bay, and we're going to make it at 40,000. And that, we have to make it at that scale um, uh, so we can get it, um, so we can get it on our small piece of paper, 40, 1, 2, 3, 40,000. And we're going to make it 8.5 by 11, 
and that's in the portrait scale. Leave the units at feet, the depth zones, we're gonna leave four colors, and this up, and we'll leave the, this is determining where the, where the colors of the water changes, and this bold one here, this bold line I can tell you now is, uh, this is 11 feet, so this is uh, probably 12 feet right here. Anyway, so just leave these the way they are, and then the next step is uh, we create the new chart. Click the left, and then you come over here on the chart and click it. Extent is being created, okay. Oh, I still have this on, let me shut that off. Now, this is not positioned exactly, I didn't, this is not positioned exactly where I want it. So then you come back over here and click Move Chart. If you have multiple ones up there, then they'll, they'll highlight that way. And then you can move this to be, let's say just about like that. And we're gonna call that's good. All right, that's that step. We got our chart in position. Um, next we can go here and add a compass rose, active chart. Let's, okay, select active chart. And that's, this is our active chart and it called it in so it knows where we want it. And we wanna add a compass rose. So we're gonna click this and then come over here and let's say we'll put it here. Oh, that's even about right. If I had to move it, I could come back here and say click move the compass rose and I can micro tweak its position, something like that. So there's our chart. That's what we want. Now, you can, you can make mistakes and, uh, and so forth, and then if you make mistakes, then you can delete the charts and, and carry on. But now let's, we're done here, let's go to the next step. Open, okay, and we're not saving this. We could actually save this. We could start a catalog and save a folder on our computer and save every chart we make. Then if we want to, we could go the next day or next week. These charts are updated every day, frankly, five Zulu, five o'clock uh, UTC. Uh, we could come back in a week or month and just click, click one or click two buttons and we'd download the same chart. We don't have to make it again, but we would download the latest chart. But right now we're just making a tool that we can work with for our classroom. And so Active Catalog None, it's, that's the name of the chart. And now I think we just have to say export selected charts. Uh, oh, no, wait a minute. Let me click this. Okay, I click this, so I've selected the chart. Oh, and then it remembers that I've already clicked this. So it's now processing this. And this takes, this takes just a few minutes, we'll see here. Now, then what this is going to do, and I'll just fill in the time here, this is going to create a high resolution PDF. It's going to have the first page of the PDF is going to be the chart itself, and that will be followed by five or six or seven other pages of the normal chart information, uh, the chart information, the chart notes, the chart notes, and that's uh, that's on these following sheets, and then. Um, that, that's that. Now, one thing that is missing, let's just see to what extent I can play with this while it's working here. Let me, let me zoom this up. I need to zoom in till I can see some green. Okay, here's some green right here. Let me go in here and we'll click this I button and then click this green right here. And you see um, that's a coastline. Uh, let's see if I can get a depth contour out of that. Depth, that, that's a depth contour. I want a depth area depth area, uh, sea area, sea area, let, okay, so I didn't click it right. Okay, let me look around this chart here, or I can maybe come over here. I need to get some green foreshore. I don't see any up there. Uh, let me, oh, here's here we go. Here's some nice green foreshore. I'm in the same area. By the way, this is open now. I can actually open. If I open this, it'll open the PDF. But let me just follow this thought. Okay, now I click here, and I want to go here. Um, I click, a, let's see, I keep clicking, C area, C area, depth area, perfect. Okay, the depth area, see, when I clicked here, here's a depth area, and that's that's bound by this contour and by this contour. That's this area, and here's a depth area. This value out here is zero. That's the, that's the, um, um, 
datum for the tides. That's a tide datum. That's zero feet. This datum in here is mean high water. That's minus two, and it's minus because these steps are re, go down positive. So when they go up here, they become negative above. This is zero. These are all positive numbers. When they go up above zero, they're negative numbers. So this 2.7, that is uh, 2.7 meters, and uh, that's 2.7 meters, and that's equal to the mean high water in this area. That's an important number we need to know that is sadly not on this chart that we just made. Okay, that's a digression. Longer than I need it. Now I can come back here and open this chart. And there's the chart we made. There's the chart we made. And it's a perfectly nice little eight and a half. Now that's eight and a half by 11 paper. So we can print this out and do, do measuring latitude and longitude. We can take bearings. We can look at the route. We, coming in here, you got to be real careful. You sneak in like this. On the other hand, this is not a very realistic chart for navigation. This is just for our classroom exercises. If you want to, while you're here playing with this, <clears throat> just go back and do it again and change it to say 10,000 or 20,000 and make it 22 by 34 inches and you'll see a great big beautiful chart that you literally could drive in there very safely but anyway here's the route right in there like that these remember these soundings are in feet and then here comes your notes about the charts all right that's a demonstration then you save that and you print this and then you can do the exercises